So uh, not doing the math from yesterday is perfectly acceptable. It doesn't really matter. It's totally fine, whatever. Um, but what we want to do today is we want to finish off our lab. So hopefully, when we go back and we look at like the grand master plan, we made we made our primary standard. What was, what was the purpose of the primary standard? Does anybody remember? Why did we make that solution on Monday that we called the, the primary standard? Why did we make that KHP solution? Okay. Let's think about this. We, we used our titrant and we titrated our primary standard yesterday. Would you agree that's what we did? Yeah, we used our titrant to titrate our primary standard. Now, the reason why we did that is because we knew this volume and this concentration really, really well, to a very high degree of accuracy. Then we used that to get this concentration. The whole point yesterday was to figure out the concentration of sodium hydroxide. That was the whole point. Now that you have your information, you could figure that out. You have the volume from yesterday, the concentration from yesterday, and then you also had the volume. So that, that turned your concentration from a question mark, because you didn't know, you didn't know what the concentration of your sodium hydroxide was. It turned it from a question mark to now you do know. Now you're very sure of what your concentration is. It's okay if you haven't done the math yet. It's perfectly fine. But you do have to do this math first whenever, whenever you're going to do your, your concentration calculations and stuff. So now, now we're going to take our sodium hydroxide. We know what our sodium hydroxide concentration is. So now what we can do is we can titrate, we can titrate, oh that's terrible, holy guacamole. We can titrate our concentration, our solution of vinegar. Here's the problem. Our first thing that we have to do right now is our vinegar, when you buy it in a bottle, is way, way too concentrated for us to be able to titrate it. It would take, if we titrated it, it would take like 200 milliliters of our burette of our titrant in order to titrate a sample of vinegar like straight out of the gate. So we're obviously not going to do that. If our, if our vinegar is too concentrated, what do we have to do in order to make it less concentrated? We have to dilute it. So that's the first thing that we have to do today. Step number one, we're going to dilute our vinegar with a pipette and uh, and a volumetric flask, right? So we'll take we'll take a sample, a 10 milliliter sample out with a, um, a pipette, and we'll add it to a volumetric flask, and then we'll add water so that it adds up to 100 milliliters, and then we'll invert it a couple times, and then we're good to go. Then what we're gonna do? Then what we're gonna do is we're going to titrate our dilute vinegar. <clears throat> now there were some things that I saw yesterday that I want to be very uh, clear about um, in, our, in our kind of conversations today. So what, uh, let's, let's just kind of read over the procedure for today. This is investigation 8.4. This is like a, a, a whole new proper investigation. And you're going to need all of this material. You're going to need all of this stuff, so you might as well just grab it all at the very beginning. Now, partner number one, partner number one is going to obtain 40 milliliters of vinegar, and you're going to pipette two 10 milliliter portions of vinegar into a clean 100 milliliter volumetric flask. 
and bring the total volume up to 100 uh, milliliters. So what that, what that means is that you're gonna have 20 milliliters inside 100, so that's a dilution factor of five. It's five times less concentrated than it used to be. That's all. Then you're gonna stop her and, and invert. That's, what's, what, that's what partner number one's gonna be doing, okay? So take some vinegar, titrate twice into here, fill it up, stop her and invert. Does that seem fairly straightforward? So the partner number one should be able to do that. That'll be okay. Partner number two is going to be setting up the burette. So partner number two, rinse the burette in a deep metal sink. Again, you don't have to do that, right? That's, that's if it's really super dirty. Obtain 70 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Use a funnel to fill the burette um, and rinse a few uh, milliliters through the stopcock into the waste speaker. What I want to be very clear on is how we clean our burette. What's, what is eventually going to go in here? What, what's the name of the chemical that's eventually going to go in here? Sodium. Sodium hydroxide. What are you going to rinse the burette with? Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. Right? That's the whole point. I think I saw a couple groups rinsing it with water and then putting sodium hydroxide. But the problem with that is, then there's a bunch of water in here and way down at the bottom, and that, so you're diluting your concentration of sodium hydroxide. But you're diluting it more at the bottom than you are at the top, and so it's a big nightmare, and you're gonna get crazy, crazy, crazy results. How many people got some, how many people got some like wonky results yesterday? How many people got some results that were like, oh man, two of these are okay, but two of these are like not even close. You know what I mean? I'm going to show you really quickly if I can find it. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly my results from this experiment. Uh-oh. I can't find them. That's okay. Um, what I got, just for your information, the volume changes that I got, I did three trials and all three trials matched up really well. My first, I don't know what my initial and final volumes were, but I did this titration last night. I got 9.71 milliliters for the first trial. I got 9.71 milliliters for the second trial. And I got 9.65 milliliters for the third trial. How much deviation, how much deviation is there between these three trials? It's far less than a tenth of a milliliter. Some people were getting values that were off by like an entire milliliter. Now, I don't think it's because you were doing, I want to be very clear, I, don't, I honestly don't think it's because you were doing the chemistry wrong. I think a lot of people's problems is with just reading the volume on the burette. I sincerely think a lot of people are still having trouble with reading the volume on the burette. So if you want any help today reading the volume on a burette, totally let me know. Totally, totally, that I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Okay? Um, so, uh, I don't know, do you feel like you, you're, you're ready and capable to take on this part of the lab? It's basically the exact same thing as yesterday, except one person's preparing the burette the exact same way we did yesterday, and one person is diluting the vinegar. So you're just gonna pour, pour a sample of vinegar, and you're gonna pipette out 10 milliliters two different times, and then you're gonna fill it up to 100 milliliters, and Bob's your uncle, okay? Um, you're gonna still add your phenolphthalein, right? You still wanna get rid of the air bubbles in the stopcock and everything like that. Yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah, Clem, question. Pardon? Okay, sure, no problem. Are we, do, does anybody have any questions for me right now? No? So we're doing basically the same thing. Basically the same thing, except instead of titrating KHP, we're titrating vinegar. Remember, the whole point, Idris, was we wanted to know what the concentration of vinegar was. That was the entire idea. But in order to do that, 
we had to figure out what our concentration of sodium hydroxide was because we didn't know what it was originally. Okay? So yesterday was all about this. Today is all about this. But you're still doing all the exact same junk as yesterday. Instead of titrating KHP, you're titrating this. Good? Yep. Kate, you can head out there. Let's go ahead and start. Let me know how I can help. You do the.